Good afternoon and welcome to my hobby bench once again and as you can see on the table is my Sato FA-130T engine. I just finished shooting the belated birthday present video a couple hours ago so I had everything still set up and as I said in that video I was going to check the valve lash on this engine to see if it's in if they're set properly which I, I don't think that they're set improperly because it's got such good compression. But one of the things that I always do before I run any used four-stroke engine for the first time is I always check the valve lash anyway. So the fortunate thing with this is, and it's fortunate for me, it may be unfortunate for you, is that it's got this mount and it'll just sit up like this and I can sit here and do this like this. Now whether you're going to be able to see what I'm doing or not, I don't know. But this will be the first time, and I've got all the tools here I need. i got the Allen wrench to remove the rocker covers. I've got my two feeler gauges, a go and a no-go gauge. I've got the rocker arm loosening nut, and then I've got this nice little screwdriver that's got all kinds of other little bits in there to adjust the screw on there, on the, <coughs> on the adjustment nut. So, now this is the first time I've ever opened these rocker covers. So, let's see here. I think I'm going to run this one back in real quick. I want to start with this cylinder like this. I don't know why I just that just came over me because I want to keep these rocker covers separate. I'm going to put them on separate sides of the table. Not that it makes a difference but that's just something I feel like doing today. So in that first video if you watch that first video in its entirety, I know it was a long video, and I will put a link to that video at the end of this video in case you haven't seen it. You'll know that I was unsuccessful in removing this drive hub with this cheesy, silly battery tool, battery terminal removal tool, which is unfortunate because that's really a key thing for me to do to. Uh, facilitate getting the crankcase and the, subsequently the bearings out of this engine. Without that, I don't. I no longer have my gear pullers that I used to have, nor do I feel like going and investing in gear pullers again and modifying them and investing in a Dremel and modifying them because I really don't plan on servicing engines that much more. But this particular engine really caught my eye and I saw the condition of it and the condition is that it's a used engine and I really feel like I want to work on this engine. So here you can see, you should be able to see, zoom in just a hair more perhaps, that we do have good rocker arm movement. And so I've got a bamboo stick here and I've got my glow plug out. So I'm going to find top dead center after the intake valve goes down and works. Uh, let's see here. This is the intake valve on this engine. So after the intake goes down, and comes back up. Now I want to find top dead center. Just right there. Now, wow. See, I should feel a little something. I think I feel a little something there. So I've got two feeler gauges here, and I call them my go no go gauge, and they're actually OS gauges because Sato only provides one gauge and the one gauge they provide is what I use as a no-go and it's a 0.1 millimeter. Now this one here is so worn that I don't know that I can read it anymore but I believe it was a 0 <clears throat> 0.05 millimeter. That's always my go gauge. So I'll set my check my valves at that and set it just to be slightly pinching that and I got both of this go gauge goes through there. Let me check the no-go gauge. And then I'll check to make sure, see if the no-go gauge, okay, so this intake valve is set good because it's really nipping and it's hard to get that in there. This goes in there rather easily. So this one's going to need to be, this exhaust valve on this cylinder is going to need to be set. So I'm going to loosen this guy up. Okay, so it is a, I'm not going to be using this. It is a small hex. I was mistaken. Sometimes some companies use a threaded screw and sometimes they use, so I'm going to find another 
I think that's the right size hex key for that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put my go gauge in here and I'm just going to turn this until I just feel it start to nip that and then I'm going to tighten that up. And it's nipping it pretty hard so that's too much. Hold it, tighten that, it's just nipping it. This won't go. So right now that's set properly. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this through a few times. And you always set your valves when the engine is cool or cold. Okay, so intake valve, that's exhaust. Intake valve going down, coming up. Now let's look for top dead center. Again, intake valve, top dead center. Now let's check it again and see if that setting held. It's just nipping that. We're still good there, we're good there. So I'm just going to put just a little bit more on this. Tighten it and call that good. So this cylinder has got the proper valve lash set now. Now let's remove the covers on this one. And do the same thing here. So what the small adjustment I made there on the exhaust valve was not enough to cause any kind of issues. It was open, it was a little bit out of spec, but it wasn't so much so that it would cause any real problems. But like I said, I always just like to have all of my valve lash set properly before I do the first run of a new or of a used four-stroke engine new to me because that's one thing you want to eliminate as far as uh, something that could cause or think you hear or cause an issue. You want everything to be as good as possible so that then you can get a proper assessment of the engine when it's running. Okay, so let's rotate here. Now on this one, this is the intake valve. So let's, it just went up and down and up. Let's check for top dead center. Top dead center is right there. Yep. I can feel, I feel a little bit of movement. So you can, I have got some experience doing this, but if you can feel a little bit, they're probably pretty good. If you can feel a lot, it's probably way out. If you can't feel any movement, it's really bad. So this 10.1 millimeter goes in the exhaust valve again really well, and it does not go in the, oh wait, it did go in the intake valve. Okay, so we're gonna need to adjust both of these, this cylinder. So I'm gonna start with the intake. Put this in here. Just tighten it until I just feel it start to nip that. Hold that now. Tighten my locking nut to see if it held that. Feels like it's just nipping it. And that one won't go in there either, so that's good. Now let's rotate through a few times. Top dead center, we got our go gauge. It's just touching it. That won't fit. The no-go gauge will not go. So we're good there. So let's check our exhaust valve, even though we haven't set it. Still, that goes. It's just nipping it. You know, I don't really even need to adjust this because I mean, yeah, sure, I can push this in there, but I can feel it nipping it. For the sake of the video, let me just do a. It's going to be the most minute adjustment possible. 
because it really wasn't bad. In fact, yeah, it's just going to be like the weight of this wrench falling. Seemed like it moved a lot more than I would have anticipated it. good there. Let's rotate it through, check them both again, and then we'll be done. Okay, this intake valve operating. Okay, it's done. Come up here to top dead center. Just right there. Let's do our <coughs> no-go gauge. Okay, that doesn't go and that doesn't go. Now let's make sure our go gauge does. Okay, so we're good. So I'm not sure if you saw any of that. I hope, hopefully you did. Um, but the only other thing I'm gonna do now is just kind of look at the general condition of this. So yeah, clearly it had some runtime on it. This was not a new engine, but it should be a good runner. I mean, there's no reason why it wouldn't run uh, very well right now. The only other thing I need to do is I need to remove this little quick keeper. I don't like those things at all. Although, in this case, I might use it. It depends on how the throttle hole on my upright lines up. But uh, anyway, that's how I set the valves on a twin cylinder engine or any single cylinder engine. So I hope you enjoyed watching.